5 bolsas por 10. Okay, and we are live. Hello and greetings. Hello, everybody. Um, okay, so uh, I have um, had to do a lot of uh, reconfiguring, and I think everything's working. So if uh, any of our volumes are low or anything like that, let us know. Um, but assuming that everything is okay, I'm going to go ahead and start my preamble okay uh, like sound good oh yeah okay good 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 yeah awesome all right so uh welcome to shroud of the avatars release 123 live stream uh each month we have a live stream the day after we publish the major update this month's update is release 123 we are now in our 11th year of updates We've been doing monthly updates for a full 10 years. Uh, we haven't missed one yet. I think we had to shift one or two by a day, but we've made an update every month for 10 years. Uh, <clears throat> Shroud of the Avatar is a free-to-play online game with over 400 scenes to explore. Uh, you can follow us here on Twitch or on Facebook slash Shroud of the Avatar. Uh, or via RSS on our website, shroudoftheavatar.com. We have uh, at least one live stream a month providing updates on game development as well as upcoming events and sales. Today, we will have at least two prizing give giveaways. Uh, to enter, type the, phrase, um, <laughs> type the phrase chaos in the clover uh, into any in-game chat. So this is stress, not in Twitch, but you have to be in the game. And uh, you could uh, put that in Universal. You could do it in a whisper, anywhere that you could type a chat to somebody in the social system. Uh, type the phrase, and you will be entered into the giveaway. Um, hey, is there any other way for them to enter the giveaway? I believe that they can purchase something on the website so if you purchase something for five dollars or more which i believe everything is five dollars or more now uh then uh, that should count as well and if i'm thinking if you're thinking of another one let me know <laughs> no that was it yep okay um all right so uh all right um in the event that folks watching the Twitch stream complete a hype train, then uh, we will add a round of prize drawings for each level of hype train completed. So uh, that could get up to five additional drawings that way. And uh, the stream is expected to be about an hour. Uh, lately, we've been going longer than that, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but uh, pretty much um, the drawings will go um, close to about uh, 5 p.m. It's about a little bit after 4 p.m. now. So um, so that's where we are. Um, okay, so I am Steven Reinen, and I go by Ravelox in-game and pretty much everywhere else, too. So I'm strange. Uh, and I, <laughs> am, uh, I, I hold a, a varying number of hats uh, with regards to the development of the game. Um, I take care of uh, administration uh, operations, and uh, I also do some design work as well. Um, so I will pass this along over to Allium first, if you don't mind. Okay, uh, I'm Allium. I am a junior developer, I suppose. I've been in charge for a while of bug tracking and release notes and patch notes updates, and uh, I've been the last year or so starting to fix little itemization and crafting and so-called bugs. And, and a very Not good job well you're building. doing of it, too. Well, yeah, but we'll get you there. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, uh, so Mr. Jones. Hello, everyone. My name is Scott Jones, and I am the art guy, for lack of a better phrase and term, to describe what it is I do. 
uh, I'm uh, uh, I suppose uh, I suppose I'm a senior artist in the computer gaming industry. Uh, I've worked uh, with folks like Richard Garriott and Starlong and and uh, a variety of other people uh, over the years, um, uh, not just for uh, Origin System in the past and for uh, uh, Portalarium and now of course for Catnip Games. Um, I've been a uh, 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 a person of interest within the realms of the uh, the world of Ultima uh, and uh, and its storyline and everything else for a while. And I've enjoyed uh, uh, forays into that world as well as many others in creating fiction for worlds and art for worlds, environment art, uh, concept art, things like that. And so um, uh, uh, these days I'm doing uh, a lot of objects and such, which we're bringing into the game to allow players to enjoy decorating their areas and having houses and things of that kind. And uh, of course, you know, as always, fixing bugs when necessary and when possible to uh, improve the look and feel and functionality of the world that you guys get to play in. Excellent. Yep. And uh, of course, as usual, Scott, uh, Scotty uh, tends to minimize himself. He, he, he is considered our art director at this point. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and and uh, you also uh, um, uh, failed to mention your in-game persona, which oh, I believe in months to come will become uh, incredibly important for players to know. Oh, that's very true. You know, I always forget it. It's sort of like a, uh, it's it's an alternate uh, kind of persona for me that I utilize in a lot of spaces, and that includes the historical society that I'm in, um, uh, as well as uh, Shroud of the Avatar as well as uh, a couple different high fantasy societies here. Um, uh, and I go by the moniker of Lord Nimrond. Uh, my full name is Nimrond Ionescu, which is uh, uh, Romanian. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, and uh, the, the, the title of Lord in, in, in both societies, which is always fun, but really it just means more of a public servant than anything else. And so that's certainly the part I play whenever I can. And uh, on the side, I like to be a storyteller. So you'll see me, if you actually see me live at places like uh, Ren Fairs and things like that, and SCA events and other events, I'm often the teller of stories and the, the creator of spinner of tales. And uh, uh, I love reading out loud, and I love, uh, I love uh, creating worlds in which people get to play. There you go. So um, just to say, we are currently at eight. Well, oh, and... There you go, level one on uh, Hype Train. So we now have three drawings for today. I'm writing that down. So we have to keep an eye on this. They, they might keep hyping us, and uh, if they bring us up to level five, then they get lots of prizes today. Um, oh, so cool. one other thing that's uh, also been a tradition is that if uh, I believe, uh, who is it? Is um, John somebody, right? Uh, Basically, if uh, they oh John Marcus yeah John Marcus if he um, if he uh, uh, um, uh, cheers uh, Leet uh, was it uh, seven I don't thirteen thirty seven thank you that no uh, uh, eleven <laughs> yeah no thirteen thirty seven yeah 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 so if if he um, if he tweets uh, or tw if he um, uh, cheers cheers those bits. Man, I'm, I'm not doing good. Uh, if he cheers those bits, then a song is demanded. And, of course, we now also have Scotty. I'm putting you on the spot on this one. <laughs> we have uh, Scotty on the stream. So if he does that, then Scotty could do a reading or a, uh, a song of some kind. So, um, cool. Yes, everybody knows they don't want me to sing. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. and, and actually, they're moving up. on. Uh, they're at 17% on level two for the hype train. So this is uh, this is pretty good. Um, oh, I, I will say something else. Uh, they they are not here, but they are here in spirit for the moment. They literally are here in my presence, but due to it would be a conflict of interest if they were to appear on our live stream. But but visiting me right now is the uh, uh, the the former community manager fellow from uh, Portalarium in the days of old, uh, Barrick, and he wanted me to tell you all hello for him. He misses you all. Hey, uh, he's, he's doing work for other companies right now. Um, and so it would be it would be unwise for him to appear on our live streams because he does live streams for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but I've done work for those other companies too on contract. 
Uh, uh, but that so, but, but that means that doesn't get in the way of me appearing here. However, again, Beric says he misses everyone. He says hello, and uh, he hopes uh, everybody's still having fun in, in the world of Shroud of the Avatar. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and nothing's stopping him from uh, stopping by, coming in and game and playing for a little bit. And you know, he could still do that. That's true. I think I think so. Yeah, I'll yeah. have to ask him. And yeah. and uh, another thing, by the way, speaking of uh, Renaissance Festival, I don't know if any of you all are local, uh, but if you do want the chance to see us and you are local, um, uh, we are going to probably uh, be out there at least a little while on Sunday. I'm going to go there uh, to uh, uh, Sherwood Forest Fair and uh, spend a few hours on Sunday just enjoying the uh, beautiful weather. Uh, uh, I'll probably be dressed up in a light costume. Uh, you may catch myself, some friends of mine, and possibly even Barrick there if you happen to come by. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, Sherwood Forest, that's, um, was it basically on the way down to Houston? From At least Dallas? so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. So that's And it's, cool. a, it's, a, it's a local, very wonderfully put together Renaissance Festival for folks who like doing that kind of thing. And I know that I used to interact with and... Uh, um, spend time talking to a number of different Shroud people in the older days who used to like to go to and even knew a lot of merchants at Sherwood Forest. So, you know, uh, you know, have at ye if that's the kind of thing that you all would like to do. You may see my shining face out there as well. How long do you know how long Sherwood Forest is open for? I, I'm I, I know. Well, uh, during the day, it's open until dark. Right. Um, and it's open throughout this weekend. And I believe this is their opening weekend. So I ah. think it's for the next four or five weekends maybe oh okay all right cool so yeah, check it out online they have a they have a nice site and you can read all about the stuff that they offer there yeah i have to I have to check it out um we have a, a an upcoming um player event uh for the eclipse on uh oh. it was it april's 8th and um uh we just completed another hype train level that was level two so we are now up to four prize games oh, um and so uh the, yeah so we're having a player event um i'm kind of this is this is off the thing it's not official it's not a catnip thing or, or shroud of the avatar official but uh since we're talking about this type of thing um i'll be uh, uh kind of hosting at least i put it together um in the uh in the parks that are across the street from my house uh over at the lake we're gonna <laughs> have a get together and watch the um watch the eclipse come and go and uh you know have some uh barbecue and uh, uh play some games and things like that and yeah i'll probably uh uh have some uh shroud of the avatar swag that i'll be able to give away uh you know run some uh uh type of uh, raffle type prizes or something along those lines uh right. to... what's the actual what's the actual day of the eclipse uh april 8th yeah and april it's 8th. yeah it's gonna happen around 1 30 p.m up here um Ah, you know, it's okay. going on a diagonal, so um, the time is going to vary a little bit based on where you are. I'm, yeah, I'm going to post a, uh, a a nice interactive map that uh, shows the path. Cool. Oh, right. very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. I mean, we're uh, down here. We'll we'll get a little bit of the uh, the uh, I guess epicenter of it. I don't know if you <laughs> like the you know, but it won't last as long as I think as up as it will right. up in your area. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. It depends on where you are um, in the swath. You know, closer to the line and the the center of the line up even up here is a little bit east of Dallas. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, I, I think the I think it's going to last like a minute and forty eight seconds. I think was the number. I, I forget. Um, what I saw it, it's long enough, you know, it's just, it, it we're going to get the full totality, but it w just won't last as long as if we right. found someplace was optimal. And, um, I, 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 I tried, I, I wasn't, um, I probably wasn't as, uh, um, you know, uh, quick as I should have been to get things, the plans nailed down. Uh, but, uh, still I got, I, my house, where my house is, there are fields to the right of me and fields to the left of me. <laughs> there, there are fields everywhere here, uh, baseball fields right across the street. And there's a field on, on behind my house and the lake. So there's plenty of sky. Um, and, uh, um, the, uh, the park is one of those ones with the pavilions and stuff like that. So, um, 
I'm, you know, planning on camping out there in the morning and getting things all set up and, and doing that. Uh, and the reason why I bring all that up, of course, is it ties in. If, if uh, Sherwood Forest is still open um, around that time, you know, the following weekend, or uh, I'm assuming it's a weekend only type of thing, right? It um, is, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So so then, you know, um, anybody who comes, comes over and hangs out, we could maybe do a secondary field trip to go. Uh, check out uh, Sherwood Forest as well. Um, I understand that Nystel actually is a resident over at uh, Sherwood Forest. Yes, that's correct. Uh, or at least I know that he and I believe his daughter uh, uh, often do things at Sherwood Forest Fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike Nystel, great, great guy, very creative. Yep. And, uh, and, uh, and I think they still engage themselves in the quest nights here that happen um, uh, in Austin or in and around the Austin area. So if you like live action role playing with like giant dice that you get to roll on stage and things like that, they have there's a whole adventure that's uh, that's sometimes set uh, in the same area that they do the uh, haunted houses, the the haunted trail stuff uh, that happens. Gotcha. So, yeah. And, and for those of you who don't know, um, Nystel the Wizard is actually in the Ultima games. So. He's also one of the few people whose actual last name was used for a magic spell in the old D&D &D rules. In fact, Nystel's Magic Aura, that's named after him. Yeah. So, yeah, nice guy. Uh, I've seen, uh, he does videos uh, uh, when um, uh, Sherwood is, is around. He, he does YouTube videos on uh, on what's going on down there, too. So, yeah. All right. Uh, well, it's we hijacked the stream long enough, I think. So let's go, uh, and, and I guess an update is that we're at 56% uh, of the next tier. Uh, I guess it's tier, yeah, level three of a hype train. So it's doing pretty good. I haven't seen a hype train in a while. Um, what do you mean you've hijacked it? Who's in charge here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I hijacked it from the official, uh, I mean, we do have a, a format so <laughs> yeah and, and this is uh, all that is non you know not catnip uh, uh official right so but um you know the heck with it right who's gonna yell at me um all right so let's see here blah 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 blah, blah. okay so the first thing is sales um kodos will be on sale on the website for 20 percent off uh, the rolling two-hour in-game crown store sales will be 30% off, and in-game deed upgrades will be 20% off from the 15th of March through the 21st, which means I'll generally patch that on the 22nd to take the sales off, so the, the sales end in a, a kind of blurry way um, as far as what time that is, but it's... Um, It'll definitely the sales will definitely be on through the entirety of the 15th uh, Central Time. Uh, now the deed upgrades, although we do cycle through and you know put up various sales uh, here and there, the deed upgrades this month are a little bit more significant. Um, so uh, we uh, we've introduced a new lot type uh, into the game uh, with this release, and I know uh, there's also um, the um, uh, the water lot deeds that people have been waiting for. This has been on the, the schedule for quite some time. Uh, apologize for it taking so long to get it into the game. Uh, but uh, uh, sat down and I, I got through all the code this um, this past month and got it all done, all tested, and everything is nice and good and working. Uh, so what we have are two different things, and we'll go into this in a little bit more depth. Um, I'm going to go over the second one first, is that... Uh, as of now, at this very moment, you can in-game upgrade all the way from a row lot deed to a water castle lot in a player-owned town. So um, for the old guard, right, founders and benefactors who pledged uh, money to help support the original development of the game back when Portalarium owned it, uh, they still have the exclusivity of having the place anywhere uh, water founder uh, lot deeds. Tax free. Tax yeah, yeah tax free. Sorry. Um, hmm. And uh, so basically, that means that they, you know they they could take uh, go get a water lot in Brittany Central or Brittany Alleys or any of the other scenes that have uh, enough water to place those uh, types of things. Um, 
and they can have a tax-free water lot uh, in those scenes. Um, the rest of the players uh, who have POTs, there are these baked-in permanent um, docks out in the bay of like the forest scenes and things uh, that up until now have been completely useless because most the bulk of the players couldn't use them. Uh, they, they didn't have any way of getting those uh, deeds. So uh, we've added in um, tax-free water lot deeds for POTs for player-owned towns uh, all the way from uh, village, uh, town, city, keep, and castle. So you could take your deed if you have a row lot deed in theory, you can go upgrade that all the way up through all the stages to get all the way up to a castle tax-free uh, water lot uh, placeable deed. Um, or so, even from a market deed. Exactly, or from a market deed, uh, which is the, the other new topic that we have to talk about. Um, so uh, the other new thing is this market lot stone. Uh, so we've created a new... Uh, this is actually the first time since the original design of the game that we've added a new lot type to the game. And uh, so the governors and stewards of the player-owned towns can purchase in the uh, crown store for very cheap, um, very cheap, uh, uh, a set of um, lot stones that they could place down just like they would place down for any other uh, row lots or town lots, city lots, etc. Uh, in their in their town. Uh, I think we're selling a, a bundle of 10 lot stones for 300 crowns. Um, yes. So, you know, extremely cheap. It just, you know, obviously you need to get something out of it. <laughs> so, um, but uh, so you could get those stones, place them down in your lot, uh, place them down in your POT, and uh, they will be one half the depth of a row lot. So same frontage, which is about, I guess, in 10 meters is, I believe, our mm -hmm. intended uh, length. And then they go back uh, deep eight meters. Uh, so it's a little right. bit more than half. Go ahead. That was it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, no, like... A row lot is 15 deep. So, yeah, yeah it's a little right. more than half. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I didn't want to do uh, 7.5, so I rounded up to 8. Uh, you know, just a lot easier on, on the uh, the thought processes. Um, and uh, so this, de this, this lot type, when you place a deed on it, and it's, the deed will be a market lot deed, uh, you cannot place a house on it. Obviously, it's too small for a house. Um, and uh, you can't place a basement or a dungeon. So, of course, our game has player, player dungeons where you could design your own dungeon uh, and put that on your house lot. Uh, this market lot or a market stall uh, is, is intended for that purpose, to put a, a vendor on it um, and then uh, have some decorations and stuff support, to support the idea that you're selling things. Um, Obviously, we're assuming that the players are going to come up with different purposes and uses for them, excuse me, um, other than just purely uh, being vendor lots. But uh, this is. For been... instance, um, I was talking to Belladonna Rose in Night's Watch, and she took the town bulletin board and put it on the market lot because that was taking up a lot of pot deco slots for each piece of paper that was on the board. Ah, yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, interesting. They set the daylight here. Um, and I wonder, so I, I wonder now, I mean, because you're going to be showing a little video soon, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll show the video. And uh, I, actually, I should bring the pictures up right now. So. Yeah, please, because I was wondering something. I I, uh, I don't know if you all know, but many years ago when we were first talking about uh, things that we might do with this game and, 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 and uh, making it, you know, what Richard wanted to be made then, uh, there was talk back then of the possibility of oh what if what if adventurers could go off and do visit other places and set up tents that they could dwell in while they were either visiting other towns or visiting other players or maybe even there there would be a way to you know have some encounter area out in the middle of the woods where you could say i want to set up a camp and then you could like lay out a tent and there might be things that attack you in the middle of the night or whatever now but aside from that the reason why that was such a cool idea is that you you were literally taking your pavilion and camping somewhere and i wonder if it would be possible you know for players to say hey there's a big large open field uh you know in my pot and you know i'm going to lay these things out there 
so that people can place tents on as if they're coming into town and setting up a tent to engage in like a, tur a local tournament or something like that. Yes, you absolutely could make a tent camp. And I found that because these lots are not very tall, you can place them under the very tallest trees. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. that's cool. Yeah. Now, let's yeah, explain. That would let's, make a perfect little camp. Let, yeah. Let's explain that a l just a little bit. So um, there is a, an invisible box, right? It's a huge rectangle, actually. It goes down, sinks down below the ground, and it goes up above the, the, uh, the lot in, in, in the shape of the lot. Um, and this is intended to make sure that when you place the, the lot marker um, that the appropriate height is there in case you, like if you place a city lot, you could have a house that's like five stories tall. Uh, and then, of course, we want to allow for some decorations to be placed on top of the house too, like smokestacks and you know chimneys and, and things along those lines. Or uh, if it's a flat top house, obviously deco and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. And uh, so the, the game has a reservation of that airspace. Uh, so if, uh, um, if for instance, uh, a yew tree, one of our, our epic trees, it's like, I don't know, 15 stories tall or whatever, is there, the branches would be too low to put a city lot underneath it, you know, near the trunk. Because you have to make it tall enough to account for any of the possible houses on that lot. Right, yeah. Yeah, otherwise it would, you know, conflict with the... Um, the, the branches of the tree and stuff. So in this case, um, because we're not putting any houses on it, I intentionally shrunk down the height. So that way it can be used in this way. Of course, I wasn't awesome. thinking specifically of putting them under yew trees. I think that's great. Um, but uh, th that's, I was like, yeah, there's no need for this height. So I, I cleaned it up. But I just I, I love the idea of and that and that can be used for a variety of reasons too. I mean, I love the idea of saying that, oh, this notable personage that dwells in this other city is coming to visit this city and as opposed to staying in an inn or a tavern or whatever, you know, no, they've set up, you know, there's there's a place where the visiting lords of such you know, so and so set up their encampments because there's going to be, you know, a jousting tournament or whatever, you know, whatever, a, a, a battle tournament is going to be occurring soon. I just love that idea. And I, I think it's cool that this would allow for that kind of thing. And this doesn't have to be a human camp either. We have a variety of conversationalists that are programmable, that are available to players. There's elves, there's kobolds, there's ghosts. Cool. That's super cool. <laughs> so yeah, you could make a, a camp full of ghosts and skeletons lying on the ground because the whole camp has been murdered and <laughs> have them with the conversation available. Uh, there could be a whole story behind it. I love that. I lost the video. I'm trying to find it. No. Were there pictures too you were going to share? Yeah, I'm sharing the pictures now. We won't see them, sadly, um, unless you're watching the stream. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, just open the, the Twitch stream on another browser window and mute it. Uh, because there's going to be a delay in the sound. Oh, I see. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you don't want to create a sound loop. Um, but uh, I think you know, Playroom Town Market Lot MP4. Yep, I believe this is the final version. Um, so let me uh, let me go ahead and move on to the video. I'm going to leave up the slideshow while I'm getting that set up somehow. Sources. Yeah. Add source and then we will do no, I need a new source. There we are. Okay, done. Yay, and everybody gets to see stuff. Okay. Hey, that's the VLC logo. Yeah. <laughs> Where is, is it playing? No, it's not playing. All right, it's playing on my screen, but it's not playing on the video. As far as I can see. Taxes are the same as a lot. 
I see people talking in Twitch. Gotcha. It seems way stretched. That's better. No. Yeah, why am I not getting video though? Alright, stop that. It may not be able to play the video. I don't know why. Uh... Uh... Yeah, fail. Wah, wah. Wait, I can share my screen and play the video if you sent me a link to the video. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, let's see. I should be able to do this though. Um, well, I mean, I could, I could definitely cheat and do it. Um, oh, do. So, all right, let me, uh, let me hide this VLC. This is something I should have set up beforehand. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, and I will go to... I'll bring it to the foreground when I'm ready. I'm pasting the link in the live stream channel anyway. Just oh, in good. Case. Yeah. And there it is. You will watch it on YouTube. Was. All right. Okay, so we'll hide the pictures and I just need to make the camera. Oh, this is going to just do wonders for my. Okay. There we go. Hey, look, audio and everything. Okay. So, yeah, this is, um, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a, a, a bazaar or market that we set up on QA. Um, and <laughs> sadly, we did this before I updated the database, um, to the current database. So it got wiped out. Um, it survived, I think, all of maybe three or four hours, uh, after it was completed, uh, which is very sad. Um, oh. ba based on the amount of work that was put in. Um, and uh, Allium uh, did the bulk of this. Uh, then um, uh, Laney and I came in and, and did a, a few a lots ourselves as well. Um, but this work came out you. really good. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Really yeah, great. It was a lot of fun, but I was uh, kind of burned out by the end, so I'm glad you guys filled in the last few gaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's a great, a whole bunch of great examples of the various ways this could be used. And I mean, just in general, if you're going to decorate a player owned town, you know, this, this, it looks like a real uh, bazaar. It's really great. Yeah. If I were planning it for something other than screenshots in a straight video, I would probably actually do concentric circles of tents. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, that would be cool. I see people commenting on the 100 deco slots. Um, that was an adjustment. When I started doing this, it was 25. Oh, and no. I adjusted it up to actually be something reasonable to close a half or a lot. Yeah, you yeah. know, some of the developers are really stingy about uh, uh, deco slots. Yeah, because it's hard to make a shop look full of stuff to sell with just 25 items. Yeah, yeah. But as you can see here with the 100 items, I mean, it definitely is uh, viable. So. Yeah, certainly so. Yeah. But yeah, that glassware shop, all those shells with glasses on it, that did not work with 25. Yeah, yeah. Do, by the way, and this is going to sound, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, uh, in many ways, I'm a, I'm a noob when it comes to certain things because I don't actively play the way a player would when I'm doing stuff. But uh, we have rings in the game. We have slots for rings and for, for jewelry, don't we? Yes. And, mm -hmm. and how are rings shown if you to go buy some? Do we have a display case that has... Like, you know, a little decorative display case with a variety of little cool rings and jewelry in it that you can say, oh, look, I sell jewelry. You know, it's no, interesting that you um, mentioned this. <laughs> we try not to do lots of really, really tiny objects. So we wouldn't want to do individual rings, but a display case would be a good idea. Yes. Yeah, to show off jewelry for sale, right? As opposed to, oh, look, here's the literal ring you're buying. It's more of a, a decorative, it's a decoration of jewelry in a display case that then, because I'm assuming that then when you want to buy 
you're given a, an inventory interface where you can actually look through the real objects that are for sale, right? Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, and actually, as I said, it, it's interesting that you mentioned this because there is a, uh, at least one ring that we are supposed to put into the game. Um, and, uh, that is a silver ring that was, uh, um, promised to the Lord of the Isle folks. Uh, I mm. actually have the meshes in the game now. Um, to start oh, it's meant to be that. a literal object you can see on a sitting on a table. Yeah, that's pretty tiny. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's pretty tiny. Um, and uh, I mean, it's going to have to be you know very well restricted. Having a um, uh, a jewelry uh, box or a ju you know jewelry uh, display case would would definitely fix uh, you know or help along those lines um, where uh, you know the item uh, maybe can only be placed into that type of a um, a display thing, so it can't. You know, I'm not going to make right. it pot deco, so it's it, it would never, you know. I mean, granted, you you wouldn't truly lose it because you have um, decoration palettes, so you could pull things out and find them. But uh, right. it's just not worth it uh, to actually have uh, just a loose ring floating around your house. Um, so uh, yeah. we could uh, use the mannequin slash fishbowl tech. Exactly. So right. it can only be placed in the display case, but it still has its own asset. Exactly. Uh, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, we have a, a number of things that uh, the um, the bug brigade has a, a set of rewards of uh, uh, mounted um, bug plaques, and uh, basically uh, the thought there is that uh, when we get to it, um, is it's on the list, we will make um, a display a a display case or a set of display cases, depending on how many more of those plaques we make, um, that will allow you to drop them in. You know, you drop them in like it's a container, and then uh, the display case will it'll pop up in the display case and, and show you the object. Um, so uh, it would be the same type of thing, I think, with the rings. Um, uh, we just have to have a uh, um, a jewelry display case that actually has slots that are intended for specific, you know, pieces of jewelry, and then they could be dragged oh, yeah. out of the inventory, and, and that's how they would appear in the world. And, and of course, you know, when I'm first thinking of it, I'm I'm not even thinking of literal things i mean other than the possibility of like because you know we have we have icons to show what rings look like right mm -hmm. and rings and necklaces and things like that and so uh, i mean i was literally claiming that it would be something like uh, a fake you know like a, the illusion of of actual items inside of display cases that you could hang the display cases up on a wall or prop it up against a thing or whatever um and you could say oh see look at all my wares for sale and you know, of course, you're not really picking from those objects. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're more of an illusion of loads of rings and necklaces and baubles and bangles and haberdashery and whatever else. Right, right, exactly. So All right, the ones that are actually for sale would be on the uh, vendors list. That that's right. Pull up, that's just like an inventory list. It, exactly. exactly right. Yeah, just as normal. So um, yeah, so that 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 sound, all sounds like stuff that uh, we could. Um, get onto the project list to, to get done. Uh, let me see here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so of course, um, I think that the water may be turning a tinge of green uh, during the sale week as well. Uh, going, oh. back, going back, getting back on track here. Uh, so <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that's the reason why the, the um, this month particularly, I wanted to make sure the deeds were on sale uh, because uh, uh, and, I, and I've seen it. People are like, okay, yeah, you know, just, just wait because we gotta wait till the fifteenth, and then everything's going on sale, and then we're gonna go ahead and you know upgrade all our deeds and and uh, you know and buy those lots and everything. So, uh, and I know that a number of people have already started buying the market uh, lot stones to uh, place them and uh, um, you know get them get them out there and start reworking their um, their vendor areas. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so we talked about that, and um, so in addition to um, the uh, lot stones and lot deeds, which of course were uh, long awaited, uh, in, in um, we, some player actually, I've I, I've been approached by a few players who asked asked questions about this, and uh, so I'm actually surprised that it's well, I don't know, I don't know, I'm just gonna say I'm surprised that it was noticed already. Uh, one of the efforts that I've been making uh, myself personally 
uh, and uh, basically uh, um, Allium is, is in on this as well. And, and uh, I think the whole team, it's going to be one of the things uh, that we're going to push for uh, going forward here um, is to audit and correct a lot of the graphical issues that we have in the game. So uh, when I say that, uh, the example will be the clover pavers um, that uh, were introduced into the game, I think, two years ago, maybe three. Uh, and um, the graphics on them were not clear. Uh, they, they were, I, I'm trying not to put them down too much, but they were bad. <laughs> they look like finish. <laughs> so um, <laughs> now, uh, basically what we found is that there's a whole bunch of stuff in the game where the um, the images were not sized correctly or did not have the ability to be uh, proportioned correctly in, in, uh, when applied to the objects in the game. So uh, I've been going through and as I find them, I'm fixing them. Uh, I'm also uh, uh, optimizing the palettes on the... Uh, on these uh, texture images, uh, and that's making them brighter. It's making them clearer. And um, I, no, no lie. I somebody reached out to me, one of the longtime players, and said, you know, we just logged in, and it's like everything looks so much better. And it's it's just amazing that they noticed this. Um, uh, you know, those uh, people who play every day are probably not noticing it as much. But if you take a closer look, you'll find that things are, are less blurry and, and clearer. And, and there just seems to be more depth to, to a lot of the graphics that we have in the game. Uh, so uh, that's one of the things I want to continue doing. Um, and uh, it, it's a kind of a refresh for the game uh, as well. Yeah. Steven has been doing deco. I've been doing item icons and store screenshots. Anything that you see that is blurry or old icons that have a pink uh, outline for some reason. There's a whole period of time where a lot of them had pink. Really? Please report those. Yes. Oh, no. Like I... Someone did horrible masking and they yeah. used magenta. Uh... Yeah. 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 No, no idea why. Um, yeah, the sale week is the 15th to the 21st. That is correct, Serenia. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let's say it this way. Back in the day when, when Portalarium was the, was the um, studio running, running things, um, there was a lot of rush to get you know, things out the door. So um, I, I, there's a, there's a lot to, to bite off. There was a lot going on. Um, so I, I don't 100% blame it. Um, I, it, it's a, a time crunch that we, you know, progress had to be made. Um, so a lot of things were kind of like, we'll go back. I mean, I remember even as a player back in those days, uh, watching streams, watching telethon streams to say, this is our first pass. We're going to go back. We'll do a second pass. We'll do the, you know, the polish pass. We'll do And, and um, basically when I started taking control of the project, uh, this is, I guess, this is going on the third year. Um, my mantra has been slow down. Um, I don't want things going out the door that have bugs that we know about. Uh, it's, you know, um, there have been things that uh, over the last couple of years, I'm trying to think of one specifically. Oh, treasure maps, actually. Tre treasure maps is a great, uh, great example. Um, that one, uh, I think I personally added three months onto the development of that uh, by pull it, putting the brakes on things and um, insisting that uh, Devil Cult, you know, take the time to work out some of the stuff uh, and make sure that we uh, put out a, a product that was as perfect as possible. And, uh, you know, there, I, obviously when it went released, there was still a bug or two here and there. Um, but uh, there was no reason to rush it out. Um, you see, it was like, but we don't have anything, you know, have anything new for this month or, or you know, whatever it is. And uh, this is why uh, our development schedule is defined as, as being, um, you know, quality of life, quality of life, and then content. Um, is to give time to make sure that these things are, are worked out and, and uh, uh, um, made as best as they can be uh, before the players touch it and then say, oh, but you didn't do this. You know, in five seconds, they break something, right? Um, but uh, yeah, that, so that's, that's where we are as far as that's concerned. So yeah, the, the, the development of the game is slower, but more methodical now. Um, I mean, those of you who may remember back in the 
early catnip days, right after it was transitioned from catnip to por uh, portolarium, that we would have uh, situations where uh, patches were put in uh, on the fly, um, and then more bugs were introduced throughout the release um, than uh, than positive, you know, uh, uh, technology changes or, or improvements. Um, so uh, it took a little while to to you know to get to the point where we could pull back and say, no, no, no I don't think the players are all going to turn the game off and walk away if we take a pause and make sure we fix this correctly. Um, so uh, that's where we are now. And uh, uh, I'm not going to attribute it directly to this change, but um, our player base is growing. Um, and this is documented even by our uh, d d detractors uh, that uh, our um, population on Steam, which we don't push Steam at all, uh, has actually increased over the last six months or so. Uh, by about 30 percent um so great now the funny That's thing good. Good yeah it, it, it's it's great news because the thing is is that steam represents probably about one percent of our player base so mm. <laughs> i mean it's really small a very small footprint uh and uh for that number to be going up um in, which obviously we're not marketing we can't afford to market anything yet um but uh uh you know it just it's 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 a telling sign that that we're doing something right so thank you everybody because you know you guys sticking around and uh supporting the game subscribing to the game all that neat stuff yeah shameless plug i know um but uh that's what keeps this thing going so um we're doing our best to uh make sure that the content is quality that the uh the game itself is improved i mean we we acknowledge it's a 10 year old game so, um, you know, the, the, the graphics, the tech, uh, we have to keep up and compete with uh, stuff that's brand new. Uh, so we're already, you know, behind the eight ball, but uh, we're definitely um, keeping up and making strides and, and doing things. And, and there are plans, there are lots of plans, but unlike previous, uh, we're not gonna try to implement all those plans at once. Um, so, uh, you know, stick with us and, and see where it goes. Um, so anyway, that's all, all, all the talk about, let's say we were introduced the blooming flavor pavers. Uh, so now uh, those white flowers that, uh, are in real life will, uh, be interspersed in, in clover in the springtime. Uh, we have a set of, uh, pavers that have those. And if you go in game, go into first person mode and really look at the pavers, you will see they're actually clovers now, not just weird green splotchy blobs. Uh, and uh, so the new- Do we have new... images to show them? Can we show them images? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, this is stuff I didn't think about doing ahead of time. So I can maybe do that. Um, let me see. Give me a second while I- Give me a second while I uh, whip this out here. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. I'm going to get rid of these. I think I could do this. And then add an image. Yeah, I think this is this is a pretty good one here. Okay, um, done, and make it visible, and there you go. Okay, look at that. So, um, yeah, for I mean, for those of you, who, and I'll, I will say, and this is Scotty, Scott, Scott, Scotty had said this to me, and I'll, I'll say this in a uh, somewhat generic way. Um, uh, you know, I'm removing all the expletives that were included. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But um, when, uh, not specifically the Clovers, Clo the original Clovers were made by Damon, um, but the, uh, uh, some of the artwork that, that Scotty had done in the past, you know, he'll do it and it comes out really great, puts it into the game. And then other uh, folks, and this is back in the Portalarium days, other folks on the team would go through the final, you know, QA aspect of it and say okay those files are too big or you know it, it is, this is where our, our graphic quality problem comes from uh, so they they would actually change the uh, the sizing of the uh, the image and uh, the, the hilarious part and I mean it this is hilarious uh, 
is that they didn't understand what the number was that they were changing. So if you have an image that's 1024 by you know 768, let's just say, uh, in the game database, they told it it was 256, uh, which yeah. didn't it didn't um, compress it. It didn't you know crunch the image. Uh, all it did was make it blurry. <laughs> so, yeah, and turn it into a blurry mess. Yeah. And I it, can't tell the number of times that I've discovered things. I'm like, wait a minute, that shouldn't look like that. Right. I know I, it shouldn't. I, 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 I honestly have a feeling that there were good, there were good intentions behind it. And I think that they thought that that was going to save space on the hard drive. But that setting doesn't do anything for the file size. Uh, so uh, setting those images, uh, setting the image properties in our project uh, to match the the actual size of the image will produce this, what you're seeing yeah. now, instead of actually having, and again, right, uh, um, well, actually it's too late now. Um, if <laughs> it, uh, Before the patch, if you guys had Clover and looked at it, then you would see that it was all this, I, I, I don't know, it looked like a dog chewed it up and spit it out and then there's your Clover. Um, so uh, now, and again, even in this image, you're still in technically third person. If you go into first person, you know, hit the V key a couple times, so that way you're actually looking directly at, at the uh, sort your environment. You, that's the closest you could get the camera to these pavers, and you could see the the veins in in the clover. It's exactly as it should be. So. Mm. Um, yeah, and uh, so the uh, so uh, the thing I wanted to say with this is that uh, putting in the new clover pavers, uh, I went back and fixed the old ones as well. So uh, the old ones got an upgrade, and the new ones now um, are in the system, and, and they have flowers. So you could uh, we have um, the full. Uh, the full pavers, the sparse pavers, and the very sparse pavers. Uh, so you'll be able to mix and match stuff, and you could even mix and match the ones with the flowers with the ones without the flowers. So this actually makes it a little bit more dynamic, um, and this is the type of thing. I know these are small things, guys. I know that uh, uh, there's going to be people out there saying, oh, you should be working on skills, and you should be working on this. There's a lot to work on. This is one of the things that I know I can do without any problems, so this is what I'm working on uh, uh, at the moment. And we're backlogging stuff too. Uh, Scotty and I have been working together. We're getting things set up so that way we have uh, m months of rewards in advance. Uh, so that way we're not desperately scrambling every month during our, our very precious sprint time to uh, to come up with something to uh, put into the subscriber bundles and, and the login rewards. Uh, so uh, we're, you know, it's it's kind of like uh, like right now I think we're doing something that's um, uh, we've made something that's gonna be like uh, in June I think we've got something for September uh, you know so and these are not the only things so it's like little pieces are getting filled in as we go along and if we keep this up you know it's not like when we uh, get three months ahead we'll stop and then we have to do it again uh, we'll keep going and just then we don't there's this is this is where my philosophy is. There's no pressure. Then all I have to do is say, oh, we need an item. You know, we don't need five items. We don't need 17 items. You know, we keep doing this, and then we, we get down to a point where we only have to do an item or two, um, and to keep that progression and keep keep the the edge a few, you know, like four to six months ahead of us, uh, and then we can work on bigger things and, and make sure that that's all going on. So uh, this is all part of the plan uh, to make sure that that happens. Uh, and, and sorry, I, I don't know if I'm, I think I'm okay. It, it, let me know if I start spiraling into a repetition of anything here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, so anyway, uh, enjoy those pavers. Uh, in fact, uh, a set of um, a set of the original pavers are actually part of the uh, today's uh, uh, prizing, which, by the way, don't forget, say the phrase, chaos in the clover, uh, and that's C-H-A-O-S for chaos, not K-A-O-S. You know, that's a radio station. Um, and uh, <laughs> say that anywhere in game, uh, in any chat, and you'll be entered into the drawings. Uh, we are currently at um, a total of four drawings, um, and uh, I think we got like halfway through the next tier, and then that's where uh, the um, the hype train stopped. Uh, so, um, uh, 
the next thing I wanted to talk about actually was uh, that we split up the, the green bowler hat uh, set. There was a, uh, for um, St. Patrick's Day, you know, this is one of the things that comes up for the, the holiday season. And the uh, it was a set of two bowler hats, one with a shamrock and one without a shamrock, uh, which, you know, didn't make a lot of sense. The Allium is the one who actually brought this up and said, why, why don't we split this up? So um, easy enough to do. Uh, cut the price in half, so now you're paying, uh, you know, 350 crowns per hat, and you don't you don't have to buy a hat you don't want. So, um, hmm. <clears throat> so there's that. And um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, now this goes into more stuff that that we could actually talk about. Pretty cool. Um, after a long time of not understanding what was going on, uh, and actually, I, I'll admit, quite by chance, uh, because I was doing I was doing something related to the oh, I was working on putting in the market lot. All right, I was ma I made a new deed, and I actually there was a request by Allium to put it into one of our dev scenes. Um, and most of you guys who play offline know that you could get to these things. Uh, there's a, a scene called Decoration Station, and that's where we have lots set up, and, and we could test deco and, and things like that. It's kind of like a little dev um, pot. Small interruption. You're mm -hmm. still showing the picture of the clover. Oh, yeah. OK. I can get rid of that. Uh, do, do, do. Go away. There we go. All right. Yep, better. Nice. Okay, and um, oh, it's nighttime too. I should probably make it daytime. Um, so uh, during during this period of time, we were this is more in our QA, you know, internal QA phase of this. Um, uh, I was asked to put a bunch of these lots into Decoration Station, um, and uh, in in doing so, uh, I had I had found that there were problems. Uh, of placing the stones in and the um, the navigation box for NPCs was shifted off, um, and uh, so it was blocking my decorations. And I was like, you know, this sounds familiar. So uh, basically, was able to reproduce the situation where uh, people put down certain things like the haystacks, uh, the teleporter to uh, the Compendium of Pain and Suffering. Um, and a few other various items like uh, I think uh, um, lava trophies and things along those lines that when you have them present, your pets would either not spawn or they wouldn't walk, walk around or if there was a lot adjacent to yours, they'd actually appear on another lot, um, which you know, seems impossible. And this actually had us you know, scratching our heads for a while. Uh, so while I was in the editor and found this, realized, and I don't even remember if I, if Allium was the one who said, hey, maybe that's what this is. Um, I Probably that's what it was. Um, she's usually got all the, the brains going on there. Um, so uh, put down one of the, tel the uh, compendium teleporters and found that the box for it was like almost the size of the town. And so what's happening uh, on a technical basis is that when you put down the, the compendium pain and suffering teleporter, uh, if there were, were any pets on your lot, they literally were pushed off your lot. And of course they despawn. And there was no way to tell that this was going on. Elgarian looked at this back in the day, couldn't figure it out. I looked at it for a little while, couldn't figure it out. And it, it sat with a, a JIRA open for Chris to take this apart and try to figure it out. So it was really by chance and because of the market lots that we found this. And of course, that just like the uh, enhancements and the graphic images that we're working on caused a whole new audit. <laughs> and yeah. now we're looking Once at these find the things. explanation for one thing. Oh, there's all these other bugs that are open that might be affected by that. Right, exactly. So um, when I went down to see Scotty, <laughs> Uh, this uh, over the well, you know, once a month I go down and I see Scotty, and we work together for about a week. And uh, so this this month I went down there, and uh, we went through um, not only um, because basically, well, basically what I found out is something called mesh collision as opposed to box collision, and uh, the items that were creating these huge navigation blocks. Um, uh, were uh, using mesh collision. So I removed the mesh collision. I was able to 
uh, show a cause and effect and I was able to solve the problem and you know I could do a workaround. But the real solution was to find out why the mesh collision was causing the problem. So Scotty and I worked on it together and, and we did a test at a time and figured out what it was. So um, uh, Scotty, you want me to just go on and say or you want to? Oh yeah, feel free to say. I mean, right. I'll I'll pitch in. I'll chime in if you wish. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so uh, there's something called a transform, and we found that the uh, basically it's this this the transform was set incorrectly on the mesh of the object, uh, the mesh co the collider of the object, and uh, it was just, it, you know, it's kind of like uh, the best way to to relate this to you guys. Uh, is that you know how there's some items in the game that you pick it up and you want to rotate it and it actually kind of does the, this to rotate instead of rotating on its axis it's that it's it's that type of a situation um so uh so basically we just went through there and, and established a, the you know a click 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 type of method to fix that and lo and behold those items were correct so um there's uh, uh so we instead of having the cheating way of fixing the haystacks, uh, which would just use some uh, cylinder colliders and things like that, which would have been fine. We did it the right way. And uh, we put new mesh colliders on the haystacks um, and on the uh, teleporter and on a, a, geez, I don't know, it was at least uh, a dozen items that we touched. So, yeah. and, and there's still more. Um, we found the... Yeah. Um, the now that we know what's causing it, mm -hmm. if you have this happening on your lot, your pets are being pushed off, you can't cast AOE, AOE spells, if you uh, use a piece of furniture that involves an emote, like sitting down on a chair, you'll find that you just teleport into it rather than walking over to it. Now we know how to find what's causing that problem. That's right. That's right. And, and while we were in there, uh, not only did I go ahead and make sure, I mean, uh, you know, while we have the stuff open, I might as well fix things. And one of the things I noticed on the haystacks yep. is that uh, there were several of them that were not smooth. Uh, you know, there, you know, there are certain things that happen in Max, and then there are certain things that happen in Unity. And Unity is where you apply all the stuff that makes it work and turns it into what's called a prefab. It's the it's the whole kit and caboodle all in one little package. And you can see what textures it's using and what you know what what uh, material. Uh, styles are on it, you know, whether it's metallic or smooth or whether it looks like glass or whatever. And, you know, uh, one of the things that happens in there is uh, you have the invisible meshes that allow you to collide with it. And the, the box colliders and other things that you can make automatically in Unity, they're fine, they work fine, but uh, they, they really don't conform very well to the actual shape that you want them to conform to. Uh, you only get so many. They're prefab prefabricated. You get to scale them. Maybe you get to size them up and down. But what you don't get is something that is the literal shape of the object you've made, um, you know, in a lower poly level. And that is really what you want. When you want something like a podium where the little thing on the bottom is smaller and, you know, you might want to actually be able to have a little pet run around the bottom of it, um, you, you don't want to turn what what should be just a single little podium shape with a, a small thin base into this giant block that you have no control over right if you want the butterfly to land on the actual book page there better be something that looks like the book page inside the collision mesh and the other kind of mesh stuff that you work with while you're in max is you work with the actual smoothness of the real mesh that the textures are applied to um and of course you know unlike the uh, collision meshes which you don't get to see the the meshes that actually have the texture map applied are the thing that you get to look at that makes it the object that you you know you want it to be right it is the box wrapped in the christmas present wrapping that is the texture map that makes the haystack look like a haystack but it doesn't look like very well like a haystack when the facets of the really you know kind of relatively low poly mesh because we can't go too wild when those things aren't smoothed out in max it looks like someone made a haystack out of you know, uh, folded paper. It's like origami or something. It, it's you see artificial edges where they shouldn't be. You know, hay should look like bristly hay. And so when we were in there looking at it, I of course was appalled by the fact that those haystacks were not smooth. And and you know, uh, bear in mind, I don't like to necessarily blame the artists that were working back then. 
Um, and and but we we were working fast, and we were often having to work with assets that we purchased from outside sources, such as the Unity Asset Store. And unfortunately, not all things there are made alike, and, and yeah. there's not always the level of quality that you'd expect. And sometimes they forget to do things properly. And and in this case, both the issue with the smoothing, which I was able to fix, and now. The haystacks look nice and smooth and bristly and they look natural. They take natural shadows on all sides and they don't look funky. Uh, but likewise, uh, w just as there was mesh smoothing issues on the visible meshes, those transform issues are often issues left over as a remnant from whatever platform they built it in. So they may have built it not in Max, they may have built it in Maya or they, they built it in some other thing and imported it in, in through a, into a file format that you could throw the material on in Unity once you get in there. But that doesn't fix problems with scaling if the entire format of the scaling was inches instead of meters or you know millimeters and centimeters instead of meters. Suddenly you're dealing with something that you bring it into the game and it's 100 times bigger than it should be. And you have to artificially scale it down in order to get it to be the right size well yes we have that, some coils of rope that are the size of a large house oh my god well so and there you have it right so yeah. sometimes every once in a while the code doesn't like itself when it's dealing with foreign code and it freaks out and so the foreign co code that came in with those those mesh colliders was code that was associated with probably a whole different scaling unit set in a different program and so what happened was, is that something, something went wrong. And the minute it got brought into Unity, everything looked okay. Everything looked just fine, by the way. Like if you looked at it, oh yeah, that's the right size for the, the collision mesh. It looked fine when you could look at it in our, our uh, you know, behind the scenes tools. But when you hit, what we didn't, couldn't see is that when you hit play, all that changed. When you hit play, you couldn't tell until you artificially backed way out of the scene to realize, oh my God, that giant box has appeared, which is encapsulating this collision shape because for some odd reason, just that one little voodoo moment made it decide that, oh, when you play, it's not okay anymore. And we had no way of knowing until they accidentally discovered it. I couldn't believe it when I saw it myself. Yep. And there was yep. no way we could have predicted it. So thank goodness you all found it, figured it out, and we were able to go and fix it pretty quickly. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, let me jump in here and, and say, uh, of course, all the, the names and stuff have scrolled off. Uh, Spry1 has gifted a sub to, like, everybody here. Um, so uh, a, a subscription to the, uh, to the channel. Um, oh. Yeah, so uh, wow. Thanks. I mean, that's that's awesome. Uh, that's great. And uh, we, um, I mean, uh, there was uh, there have been bits. I mean, you know, everybody knows I'm bad at this stuff, uh, keeping up and, and making sure that I, I acknowledge it all. So um, uh, uh, thank you, everybody who's gifted bits and or uh, or gifted subs, I should say, and and uh, cheered bits uh, during the stream. Um, <clears throat> uh, and one last reminder that uh, uh, we are about to do the drawings for the prizing. Um, oh, cool. And uh, if you guys happen to get a, a, a hype train kicked in again, uh, we could always uh, do more. But um, I, uh, I will hold off a couple more minutes. Uh, so if anybody has not yet said the phrase, chaos in the clover, in game, please do so now. So that way you're entered for a chance to win in the prizing. Uh, we have um, four rounds of five prizes each, uh, and uh, we will be uh, drawing those in uh, the next few minutes. Um, oh, and, and so. one of the things before we do that, I can, I can share my screen real quick. I took off all the stuff that we had been uh, uh, working on for the future so that they can't see it. Oh, okay. uh, but I, I can show them because one of the things that you mentioned um, uh, was the fact that uh that we had uh added uh another haystack ah yes and that's right yep. and so i just hit present now uh i'm assuming click my my entire screen yep and say and say share i'm i'm assuming yep but uh, yeah so so here let's uh 
Let's go, let's go in really quickly. And can you see it? Yep, it can be seen. And it's... and can the players see it also? Yes, they can. The the, the our guests today. Yep. So this is Decoration Station. And so what you're seeing here is a little lot that I'm using right now, real quick. And right now, these were the primary offenders that we 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 uh, that we initially wanted to look out to fix to make sure to test our case. So this was the used as the teleporter to what now? What was it again? Steve? Uh, yeah, the the uh, compendium of pain and suffering. Uh, I, I ah. believe that's is that the challenge dungeon? Is that correct? That I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I I found there myself. <laughs> huh. Well, so you can see here, though, that, you know, here now we have three of the haystacks and these, that again, is, is. Okay. Uh, you yeah. didn't, you, you could, I had to zoom out what it was way far further than this. Like this wouldn't let you see how giant the thing was, but just like Steven said, it would knock everything off that lot. Pets, didn't it knock NPCs off as well? Yep. Yep. Uh, and yeah. it would also be, it would prevent players from being able to lay on beds or sit in chairs it's or oh, cast God. aoe spells if they wanted to use a training dummy with a bring a fire that's yep. terrible yeah well yeah well all that's luckily fixed now and so if you all if you all find or think of anything else like that that you find doing that please let us know but yeah so in between the small and the large we added the medium and now as you can see the lighting on these things is wonderful as well it looks like a nice little bushy hay bale so yeah, uh, I had to hastily remove the other stuff I'm working on, but we have some good stuff coming up later on that... Uh...